The first book of Samuel, chapter 23, David saves Kayla. When David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Kayla and are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, go, attack the Philistines and save Kayla. But David's men said to him, here and then, if we go to Kayla against the Philistine forces. Once again, David inquired of the Lord and the Lord answered him, go down to Kayla, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hands. So David and his men went to Kayla, fought the Philistines and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Kayla. Now Abiathar, son of Ami Ahimelech, and brought the effort down with him when he fled to David at Kayla. Saul pursues David. Saul was told that David had gone to Kayla, and he said, God has delivered him into my hands, for David has impri imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle to go down to Kayla to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the ephod, David said. Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Kayla and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Kayla surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? David, God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will. Again, David asked, will the citizens of Kayla surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, they will. So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Kayla and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Kayla, he did not go there. David stayed in the wilderness stronghold and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hand. While David was Horesh at Horesh in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horesh. The Ziphites went up to Saul at Gibeah and said, It is David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horesh on the hill of Hakila, south of Jeshimon. Now, your majesty, come down here whether, whenever it, is, it pleases you to do so, and he will, we will be responsible for giving him into your hands. Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has been, with, uh, who has been seen him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go with you. If he is in the area, I will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Maon, in the Arabah south of Jeshimon. Saul and his men began the search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Maon. When Saul heard this, <coughs> he went into the desert of Maon in pursuit of David. Saul was going along one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. And Saul and his forces were closing in, on David and his men to capture them. 
a messenger came to Saul, saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet uh, the Philistines. That is why they called the place Selah Hamalekoth. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. David spared Saul's life. Chapter 24. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give you enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord, the king. Then Saul looked behind him. David bowed down and pro prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed. See my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers come evil deeds. So my hand will not touch you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. May he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill off my descendants or wipe out my name from the fa my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. Then Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Chapter 25, David, Nabal, and Abigail. Now David, uh, the Sa Samuel died. Now Samuel died and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. And they bur buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved down into the desert of Paran. A certain man in Maon who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep. 
which he was sharing in Carmel. His name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surely surly and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that in yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore be favorable to toward my men, since we come at a festival time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this, Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shears and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, Each of you strap on your sword. So they did, and David strapped his own as well. About 400 men went up with David, while 200 stayed with the supplies. One of the servants told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us, and the whole time we were out in the fields, near them nothing was missing. Night and day they were at uh, they were a wall around us the whole time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is a, a, such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed uh, sheep, five shears of roasted grain, a hundred cakes of raisins and two hundred cakes of pressing figs and loaded them on donkeys. Then she told her servants, go on ahead, I will follow you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. As she came riding her donkey into a mountain ravine, there were David and his men descending toward her and she met them. David had, said, uh, David had just said, It's been useless. All my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness so that nothing of this was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely if by morning I leave alive one male, uh, I leave alive one male of all who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my lord, and let me speak to you. <clears throat> Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention to uh, my lord to what wicked, that wicked man, Nabal. He is just uh, like his name. His name means fool, and the folly goes with him. And as for me, your servant, I did not see the men my Lord sent. And now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord your God lives and as you live, since the Lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hands, may your enemies and all who are intent on harming my Lord be like Nabal and let his gift which your servant has brought to my lord be given to the men who follow you 
Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord, because you fight the Lord's battles, and no wrongdoing will be found in your, you as long as you live. Even though someone is pursuing you to take your life, the life of my Lord will be bound securely in the bundle of the living by the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies he will hurl away as from the pocket of a sling. When the Lord has fulfilled my Lord every good thing he promised concerning him and his appointed of him ruler, over Israel, my Lord will not have on his con conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or of having avenged himself. And when the Lord your God has brought my Lord success, remember your servant. David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day, and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. Then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, Go home in peace. I have heard your word and granted your request. When Abigail went to Nabal, he was in the house holding a banquet like that of a king. He was in high spirit and very drunk, so she told him nothing at all until daybreak. Then in the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him all these things and his heart failed him and he became like a stone. But ten days later, about ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. When David heard that <clears throat> Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing down on his own dead head. Then David sent word to Abigail asking her to become his wife. His servants went to Carmel and said to Abigail, David has sent us to you to take you to become his wife. She bowed down with her face to the ground and said, I am your servant and I am ready to serve you and wash the feet of my Lord's servant. Abigail quickly got on donkey and, attended by her five uh, female servants, went with David's messengers and became his wife. David had also married Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they both were his wives. But Saul had given his daughter Michal, David's wife, to Patiel, son of Laish, who was from Galim. Amen.